here we go, first ever cooking video. Now I feel nervous. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I'm in a very different setting as you can tell. This is my new house, my new flat. I've moved flat, there's gonna be a flat tour coming very soon. But today's video is a cooking video. I announced on my Instagram I'm gonna be doing a lot more cooking and this is one of the first videos I'm ever gonna film. So today, I'm cooking a recipe from Waitrose Food Magazine. I found this recipe and I thought it was absolutely incredible. It's from the Italian edition. It's still available online. It's um, the ricotta and cherry tart. This is what I'm gonna be cooking. It's super simple. There's about 10 ingredients in there. It feeds around eight people, so it's absolutely amazing for a family. Oh, there's a couple of friends of you having Italian eating. Get cooking this. Ingredients wise, we have some um, plain flour. This is 300 grams of plain flour, just any basic plain flour. Um, 150 grams of chilled unsalted butter. Um, we've got 100 grams of caster sugar, just regular caster sugar is absolutely fine. Um, two eggs, which I'm presuming we're just going to use the yolks for. And one small lemon, which we're just going to need um, the zest from. And that's literally everything for the pastry. And then for the filling, 400 grams of ricotta. This again is just weird chores, essentials ricotta. 60 grams of caster sugar, two eggs plus one egg yolk. So I've just got a set of six here. And 350 grams of some sour cherry preserve. This is deep, dark, black cherry extra fruity preserve. And that is actually everything and a bit of ice and sugar to finish. And in terms of equipment, again, super simple. Um, this doesn't even use a food processor, just literally one bowl is absolutely perfect. You're gonna need some kitchen skills. And then equipment wise, obviously a rolling pin, but we're gonna be rolling that after. Some cling film, which I've got over there. A wooden spoon, a knife. I've got a pallet knife or a butter knife. Um, and a zester for your lemon. And that's everything. So the first step is the pastry, obviously. The pastry needs to chill once it's been made and then rolled. So you want to do 300 grams of plain flour in here. You don't need a sieve, so it can just go straight in a bowl. So in a large mixing bowl, preferably, so you've got a nice amount of room. You can chill your bowl before you start making pastry. The colder the pastry, the nice and tender it is. And then we need 150 grams of unsalted plain butter. So let's get this open. Okay, so the idea is that you want to put this butter in a really small cube so it rubs in easy into the bowl. And then I'll just add a little bit of salt as well. Always just, I know I've used unsalted butter, but it helps the pastry get a little bit of colour. It's just once it's in the bowl, just rub it together with your hands. There's no special technique for this, it's literally just good old fashioned manual labour. I use a pallet knife sometimes because it's got a nice thin surface area and you just want to cut the butter. You can use your hands, but obviously it does encourage the butter to melt. You just want to chop it until it's done. So once your mixture is looking like breadcrumbs, you want the butter to be nice and evenly distributed in there. And then what you're gonna to need to do is add your sugar, a little bit of lemon juice, and then stir all that through, add your eggs, and you're good to go. We need 100 grams of caster sugar. Let's spring that in. Amazing. And then we need the finely grated zest of one lemon. Again, this just combats the nice sourness of the cherries, but also uplifts the pastry. And all that is in, you just wanna again, get your pastry knife in, or palette knife, and just give it a nice little stir, make sure it's all Nicely incorporated. So you want to add two eggs um, into the pastry. Usually it's just egg yolks, but this recipe actually calls for whole eggs. So two eggs into a bowl. I always crack them into a separate bowl just in case you get eggshell in there and that's a lot easier to get it out of the eggs rather than the actual pastry mixture. So you want to add the eggs into the pastry. I usually do it in a well in the middle and add maybe around three um, quarters of the egg and add because you can always add, but once you add too much liquid to pastry, it's really hard to get it back to a good consistency. So once you've had your eggs in, um, I've just used just under two eggs. I feel like this is the perfect consistency. Get your hands in, because you always want to go off the feel for pastry. A knife's good for keeping it cool, but always trust your hands. If it's too wet, you know. So you just want to bring the pastry together until it's a nice ball. This is a little bit dry still, so I'm just going to put the smallest little bit more egg in. It's a really important step not to over mix the pastry. You kind of want to handle it just enough so that it comes together. So once your pastry's came together, you want to grab yourself some cling film and just grab enough so that it's going to be able to wrap the pastry fully. And you just basically want to pop it in the fridge to chill for an hour. Keeping pastry chilled is the most important thing. If it's warm, it's really hard to manage and like I said, it just becomes really rubbery. And it also prevents shrinkage once you pop it in the oven. Somewhere. Okay, once the pastry has chilled in the fridge, it wants to be nice and cold. I left mine for about an hour. You want to grab yourself a rolling pin. You're going to need some flour to dust your surface and you're going to need a 23-24 inch tin tart tin with a removable bottom, I do recommend. It's not essential, but it just means it's easier to get the tart out. So what you want to do is grab your pastry, unwrap from the cling film, pastry into two thirds. You want to save one third for the topping, so let's say that's a third, that's a third. So let's say around about there, we'll take that away. This is the base, 
and then we'll save this for the top and pop that back in the fridge and save that for later. So on a clean surface you want to lightly flour and make sure you've got enough room for this, obviously you can do it on a big table and then also just roll your rolling pin in the flour so it's lightly dusted as well and then onto a surface nice and even. Be careful with the pastry because it can crack and just roll it out to around the thickness of I'd say a one pan coin. Add as much flour as you need to but don't add too much otherwise it will dry the pastry out. And you can do some quarter turns as well, just to make sure that the pastry is covered on either side of the flour. And then just scatter with it a little bit more flour if necessary. So what you want to do is pop your tarts in onto the pastry and make sure that there's enough to go around the surface and obviously up the sides. And you want to grab your rolling pin, make sure it's nice and floured, and then just start rolling the pastry back on itself, peeling it away from the bench, be nice and quick, and then lift the pastry into the tin being really, really careful, and then what you want to do is start easing the pastry into all of the crevices of the tin, making sure that it's nice and pushed down into the bottom. You want really delicate hands for this, and just make sure that it's nice and covering every single flute. Grab yourself a sharp knife, you just want to cut the top of the pastry, making sure that the knife is parallel with the top of the tin. Don't put your hand into the bottom of the tin if you've got a loose bottom tin because your hand will go straight through and your pastry will be a disaster. This you just use the blade of the knife for the full length, making sure that each piece is gently taken away. Grab yourself a little bit of excess pastry, this is a really good tip. Roll it up in your hand and you can use this to push into the crevice of every part of the flute and push each part of the pastry to make sure it's nice and firmly in the tin. And just prick the bottom of the base really lightly this just ensures the pastry can breathe when it's baked and it's not going to get a nice soggy bottom as Mary Berry would say. So this is going to need to go into the fridge to chill while you make a filling. Pop your oven on 180 and get a flat surface baking tray and pop that in there to preheat as well and then we're going to crack on with the filling. So once your pastry is in the fridge you're going to want to crack on with the filling. Your oven's preheating. So in a large mixing bowl I've emptied 60 grams of caster sugar and you're going to want to add 400 grams of ricotta cheese. Now this is full fat ricotta cheese and Italian soft cheese and it's so rich and creamy and it's going to balance out the sourness of the cherries. So you're going to add all of this 400 grams of cheese into a bowl with a large wooden spoon. You can do it with a whisk but it's a little bit difficult. You just want to start mixing this together until it's a nice smooth paste. So once you've got a nice smooth paste with your ricotta and your sugar, you want to take your egg and one egg yolk I'm using a little diddy whisk. <laughs> um, I have quite small implements. Yeah, one whole egg and one egg yolk. You want to give that a nice quick whisk just so it incorporates into the ricotta nice and easy. And then you want to add this to this, just adding a bit by bit, otherwise it might curdle. Um, so just nice and slow. If you've got any lumps in there, you can grab yourself a balloon whisk and just beat them out, which I'm going to do now because the ricotta was really um, cold from the fridge, so it hasn't quite incorporated how I want it to. So you just want to grab yourself a balloon whisk and then just beat out the last few lumps, just so it's nice and smooth. Being careful not to get ricotta all over your table, just pop that to one side. And you're going to want to grab your tart tin and you're going to layer some nice cherry jam all over the base of it, so let's grab the tart tin. So it's a really important step to make sure your tart tin is nice and cold, otherwise it's going to shrink away from the sides if it's too warm. So you're going to want to add 350 grams of cherry preserve. Now this one's from Waitrose, um, as is this recipe. This is 340, so basically just add the whole jar. We're 10 grams short, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. So yeah, just grab a little spatula or something you're going to be able to clean a whole jar out with and just add it into the pastry case. So once you've spooned it all into your pastry base, you're going to want to grab something that's quite flat. This is a spoonula. You just want to grab the offset side of it and just smooth it into the case. So just make sure that all of the surface is covered and you've got a nice even layer. Then you're going to want to top your jam with your ricotta mixture and you just want to tip it into your pastry case. And then again, you want to either grab like an offset spatula or I'm just going to use the back of the spoon. Being careful not to incorporate the jam into the ricotta. You want a nice smooth top of ricotta on top. So just grab your spoon and just evenly make sure it's nice and smooth on top. So we're going to do that now. So once that's done, you just want to set that to one side while you grab that excess pastry that you saved from earlier and you're going to want to roll it out on a clean surface that's been floured again and you're going to make some nice lattice work so that's going to cover the top of it and just make it look that extra bit special. So let's grab the pastry. Once your surface is all cleared, you just want to lightly dust 
with flour again, pop your pastry down and then just your rolling pin too, and just roll this out again to the surface of the dish, just so you've got enough to cover the sides so it can all cross over evenly. So again you can just grab your tartan and make sure that you've got enough of a width to cover each of the pieces. so I just need to go a little bit bigger on mine. A good way to do this is you can get a piece of greaseproof paper and then cut your lattices out and then transfer it to the greaseproof paper and then you can literally just slide it onto the thing rather than placing these on because once it touches the ricotta it's going to get a bit sticky so I'm going to grab a piece of greaseproof paper and I'll be back to you in a sec. So once your pastry's rolled out, you're going to grab yourself a sharp knife and a piece of greaseproof paper. Um, and you can be pedantic about this and grab a ruler. Um, it's not the Great British Bake Off, thank God. Just basically, maybe do like a thickness of one thumb. Um, just simple slices down the pastry. Um, making sure that they're all fairly equal. So once you've got that, you can grab your piece of greaseproof paper and start layering the pieces on. So you want to go one down and then grab another piece and just go one over and form an L shape and then you can just slip, simply slip one under and pop one over so they all cross over. So once your pastry is all on your piece of paper, what you're going to want to do is win one firm action, you can either flip or slide. I'm going to flip purely just because it's issue just over and on, but you can slide it off. It's a little bit more tricky to get it off, but I'm just going to flip it. Right, here we go. You're literally just going to want to do three, two, one, go and then just stretch the pastry to make sure it's covering all of the top. Now it is a bit messy guys, but once you trim the edges, you're gonna have a lovely piece of lattice work on top. So just give all of your little pieces of pastry a good old tug, make sure they're nice and tight. And then you're gonna wanna grab your knife from earlier and cut the edges. You can also roll your rolling pin over the edges too, just to make sure that they're nice and flat. So you're gonna wanna crack another egg or a ball, whisk that up and grab yourself a pastry brush Get a nice little bit of egg on there and just brush the top of the crisscrosses. Don't get it on the ricotta, just get it on the pastry. Um, and this is going to give it a nice golden colour once it bakes. So once the top is all brushed with the egg, you're going to want to put that into an oven at 180 for about 45 to 50 minutes. You want the ricotta to be nice and set, the pastry to be golden brown. And then you want to take it out of the oven, pop it on a cooling rack, take the base off, leave it to cool, a little bit of icing sugar on top and it's good to go. So let's put this in the oven. So the tart's done, it just came out of the oven, um, so it's absolutely incredible. The jam has over leaked a little bit, but that's absolutely fine. So you want to transfer it to a cooling rack, pop that to one side. It's been out for about 10 minutes and it's cooled in the tin. Um, and what you're going to do is just pop it onto something that can release the bottom. I don't know why I've still got these in my hands. I pick the tart up and then just release it on something that's a little bit higher and then it should, in theory, just pop out. Like I said, the jam's obviously made it melt a little bit, but there we go. You're going to want to grab a pallet knife or something that's um, got a really thin surface area that you can slide underneath. Um, an actual cake transporter, I think that's what they call the basic and massive pizza thing. It's perfect, but um, that you just release it underneath and it should just slide off. And then just slide it out. Remove that, pop that to one side. So the last thing you're going to want to do is top with a little dust of ice and sugar. Cut it into how many pieces you like and serve it up. So that's it, this is your very own straight from Italy ricotta and cherry tart. Um, I actually can't wait to eat this. It's been about three hours worth of work and the last work proved a little bit more difficult but I'm super excited to eat this. If you want to follow the recipe, I'm going to leave all of the ingredients and measurements down below. Please be kind, this is my first official cooking video so if you've enjoyed it, be sure to smash the thumbs up button, press subscribe, massive thank you to Amelia who's behind the camera because you're helping me out. Um, but yeah, that's everything. I'm covered in cherry jam and ice and sugar. If you enjoyed it, show me some love. I'll catch you guys very soon. Bye for now. So I've got an accordion. When the moon hits your eyes like a big piece of pie, that's the morning. Yeah! I'm a really good cook. <laughs> and actually, he's reading, he, he's reading my recipes. <laughs> I, I just feel sorry for him for like he needs a gig, so I just... I'm actually, I'm actually behind the camera right now, doing the same thing, showing him what to do. Bless his art. A good way to do this is you can get a piece of greaseproof... Greaseproof? A good way to do this is you can get a grit. Put it onto a rack, leave the cool. Wait, wait. <laughs> that was...